the monarch butterfly is at serious risk of disappearing. The number of monarch butterflies that made it to Mexico last year was so small that many now question if the population will ever rebound to its previous size. The insect's numbers have been in a free fall for the past 30 years, and this season is the worst yet. Two big reasons cited their primary food source, the milkweed, has been disappearing, along with what logging has done to their forest habitat. Hi, I'm Rich London, and this is part five of a five-part video series on how to raise monarchs. Parts one through four, we showed you everything from how to identify milkweed and collect the eggs, to how to take care of the caterpillars, and eventually how to take care of and hang the chrysalides like this. And this adult just emerged, and that's what this video is about. How the adults emerge, we're going to show you that process, show you what it took for her to get out of that chrysalis, what happens to her shortly after that, teach you a few things about the monarch anatomy, and also teach you how I know it's a her rather than a him. And then also at the end of the video, I've got a special message for you that I'd like you to consider. So let's go ahead and take a look at this process and see what really happened. Depending upon temperatures, somewhere around 10 to 14 days, your chrysalis is going to start to darken. In fact, where you see it's darkening right there is where the head of the monarch butterfly is, hanging upside down. Once it darkens a little bit, you'll start to see it darken throughout the chrysalis. This takes place over about one full day. It starts to become very dark and becoming very much translucent. You know that your butterfly is going to be emerging quite soon. The translucence can be very astonishing. You can actually see the parts of the butterfly through the chrysalis, including the wing patterns. And if you look really closely, part of the abdomen and maybe even the head. When that separation of those two parts occur up near the top of the chrysalis, that's when you know that you've got about one to two hours, and somewhere in that time period, your monarch is going to emerge. You know the day destroys the night, night divides the day. Try to run, try to hide, break on through to the other side, break on through to the other side, break on through to the other side, yeah. We chased our pleasures here, dug our treasures there. monarch emerges, the abdomen is very plump, full of a fluid which needs to be pumped into the wings. The wings come out looking quite crumpled up. This is because they need to receive that fluid through the veins that are in the wings and straighten out. 
She'll flex her abdomen to pump that fluid into the wings, and this is a very quick process. It can take just two or three minutes. After which, the monarch looks very similar to what we would expect, wings straightened out. But even after that, they need to dry. The drying of the wings could take several hours, and it'll be longer on days that are more humid. Now something you should also be aware of, when the monarch emerges, there's excess fluid also in the abdomen, which ends up spilling below it. So I've put down some plastic covering just to protect my carpet. Once the wings have dried, she'll start to flex them as well, which just aids in the drying process. Not quite ready to fly yet, but flexing to help dry those wings. You can see the veins that are on the monarch's wings here in this image. Something else interesting about this animal is when it first comes out, the long tube mouth that it has is called the proboscis. And the proboscis is actually in two pieces, and it has to fuse together shortly after it emerges. And you might be able to get a chance to see that if you've seen the butterfly right when it does emerge. Watch as this monarch comes right out of the chrysalis. You can see those two ends of the proboscis curl right up. It's in two separate parts. After coming out, the monarch must flex this proboscis, and two pads close to the head will actually pad it together. The proboscis, once it's fused together, will be a hollow-like, almost straw type of mouth part, and it uses this to dip into the flowers and suckle the nectar from it. While we're talking about anatomy, we might as well also bring up the family name of this species is Lepidoptera, and that's the name for all moths and butterflies. They're of the family Lepidoptera, which directly translates to scaled wing. The markings of all moths and butterflies are made up from these tiny little scales that are very important to the animal. They're necessary for flight and for thermal regulation of the animal's body temperature. So you never want to handle them by the wings. While we're talking about wings, how is it that I know, for example, this one is a male. In order to identify the sex of the monarch, it's all about the wings. Here's a female on the right, and in a side-by-side -side comparison, we can see the male on the left, and if you look at the bottom two wings, you can see the two black scent glands that the male has. This is what the male uses to mark that it's in the territory by letting out pheromones from these scent glands. Now also something else interesting is that Monarchs seem to only have four legs, but we've learned from, you know, first grade on that insects have six legs. I was puzzled by this for a while, too, and I looked into it. There actually are six legs. There's two legs up close to the neck. If you look at where the head is almost making a V collar, those are the other two missing legs. They've become very small because it's not really necessary for the animal. Evolved this way, sort of like the human tailbone. It's left over and not useful anymore. Okay, so your adults have emerged. When do you let them go? I would say I try to let them go within 24 hours. Got to give them time for their wings to dry. When they start exploring, they're letting you know that they'd like to get out of here. And I know it's tempting with this beautiful animal to want to hang on to it for a long time, but let's keep the main goal in mind. We raise these from eggs because we want to get them out into nature, help make the next generation, or if it's in late summer, help them get to Mexico and uh, overwinter there. So, you know, within 24 hours, I try to let them go. It's interesting to take a look at them and see them, but I want to get them out into nature. Certainly, I hope it goes without saying that if there's a huge rainstorm or something like that coming, maybe you should keep them for a little bit longer. Make sure it's a good day to release them. Placing your finger just in front of its head is just about all the convincing a new monarch needs to crawl onto your finger. Say your goodbyes and wish them luck. Give me wings, give me spice, give me money for a change of face. Those noisy rooms and passion pants. Side. I've got ears
tonight and nothing in my life But I'll survive your naked eyes I'll survive Getting to watch those monarchs be released out into nature is a beautiful moment. If you made it this far, if you put in that work, I want to thank you personally. But also now it's time for that special message that I was mentioning at the beginning of this video. If you were able to put in all that work, if you were willing to raise monarchs from eggs all the way to adults, then you must be willing to do this next part, because it's even more important. Planting milkweed. I want you to think about it. What if somehow we were able to take every single egg that was laid this year and rear it to adulthood. Just pretend magically we could make them all survive, make them go down to Mexico, overwinter, and come back. 100% success rate. What are they going to come back to? Are they going to come back to the same amount of milkweed? Are they going to come back to less? Here's some footage that was shot during part one. I've found many monarch eggs in this field. There's lots of milkweed. But if you look in the upper left hand corner, you'll see some housing developments. This entire field is scheduled to be turned into a neighborhood. The electricity boxes are already put in place. The milkweed will be gone. This is where I came to film the intro for part three. You might wonder why would I film an intro in front of this? Well, just two days prior, this place had been filled with milkweed right by that flagpole. The milkweed was growing wild, and they've gotten rid of it. They want to put a paved path up to the flagpole, and I'm all for taking care of our American flag. But do you think they're going to replace the milkweed that they got rid of? This summer, prior to this happening, I found 12 monarch eggs here. And I know that that's a small amount, and it's a small patch with a small amount of milkweed. But still, the monarchs had said, This is my spot. I like this milkweed. I'm choosing here to lay my eggs. It was a little way station for them, and we got rid of it. If we want the monarch to make it, we're going to have to start thinking about things like this and putting back the milkweed that we are removing all over the country. The monarchs that we rear, what are they going to come back to? Are they going to come back to the same amount of milkweed or less? Or could they come back to even more than what they had this year? That's up to you. Planting milkweed can be something extremely easy to do, way easier than the work you just put in rearing these eggs to adults. It can be as easy as collecting seeds and then putting them someplace you know it won't get mowed down and it'll get plenty of sunlight. Think about the overall goal. We want this population to be sustainable on its own, without our help. If we have to help it every single year just to keep that population around, that's not a long-term solution to this problem. The long-term solution is making sure they have enough milkweed to come back to, so that way they can be sustainable on their own without our help. Come spring of 2015, I'm hoping to have another video series that shows you how to collect seeds and how to start rearing these plants indoors, get them a good start, how to plant milkweed. So I really hope you check it out. Thanks again for your help.